couple who says that the little girl they adopted is actually an adult. She threatened to kill his family. We know Natalia Grace has a form of dwarfism and was adopted by a family in the United States. But the rest of her story might be something straight out of the horror movie Orphan. There was a moment when I woke up in the middle of the night and Natalia was standing over my bed. Is Natalia just a lost little girl or a grown woman pulling the ultimate con? This story is filled with sealed documents, conflicting medical reports, and parents who are being charged with a serious crime. There are very few things in the story of Natalia Grace that we know for certain, so let's start out with the hard facts. Michael and Christine Barnett have three biological children, but at one point they wanted a bigger family and were suffering from infertility issues. They were experienced foster parents and ran a daycare out of their home, so on paper they should have been the perfect match for an orphan who needed an emergency adoption. Natalia Grace suffers from spondyloepiphyseal dwarfism, which explains her small stature and means she is predisposed to problems like arthritis and difficulty breathing. Today, Natalia stands around three feet tall and has difficulty walking without assistance. She was born in the Ukraine before being adopted by a family in the United States who suddenly gave her up two years prior to the Barnetts meeting her in 2010. The adoption paperwork is classified, so we don't know why her first family surrendered her, and to this day, her original adoptive parents refused to comment on the situation. This left Natalia needing a home fast. Within 24 hours, the Barnetts were taking home a girl they were told was six years old. But two years after signing the adoption papers, the Barnetts were standing before a judge, filing to amend Natalia's birth certificate. The judge ordered her birth year changed from 2003 to 1989, which would mean at the time she was 22 years old instead of nine. That's a big difference, and if she really was born in 1989, it means the Barnetts had adopted a 20-year-old woman. After the birth certificate was amended, Michael and Christine decided to move their family to Canada to further their son Jacob's education. Jacob Barnett has been hailed as a child prodigy, and the family wanted to support his advanced study of physics. But when the rest of the family moved, Natalia stayed behind. Then, in September 2019, the Barnetts were charged with two counts of felony neglect of a dependent. So what's going on here? Did the Barnetts manipulate the court into declaring their child an adult so they could abandon her? Or was Natalia a grown woman who used her condition in order to trick both adoption officials and her new parents? Well, Christine's side of the story is something straight out of the horror movie Orphan. She may not have known much about Natalia when they met, but she accepted her health problems and soon came to love her like a daughter. But soon after she brought Natalia home, she realized something was off. Unlike other little girls, Natalia wasn't interested in playing with toys, and she had an extremely sophisticated vocabulary. Christine says talking to Natalia felt like talking to a fellow adult and not a little girl. She was stunned to later find stained clothes hidden around the house, leading her to believe Natalia was getting a monthly period. Michael and Christine knew something was strange about this child, so they had a bone density test done on Natalia, which revealed she was 14 years old when she was adopted and not six. In 2016, a doctor wrote a letter concerning Natalia's true age based on a physical examination and her dental records, and said Natalia is substantially older than she claims to be. Although whether or not this letter is legitimate or not remains to be seen. But once Christine confronted Natalia about her true age, things only got worse. She began to exhibit sociopathic tendencies, drawing frightening pictures of what she wanted to do to the Barnett family. The family was forced to hide all of their sharp objects because of Natalia's gruesome and specific threats. Christine says she would sometimes awaken to see Natalia looming over her just staring. She was also caught pouring bleach into the Barnett's coffee and pushed Christine into an electric fence. It was clear to Christine that Natalia was suffering from mental health problems as she reported hearing voices and once tried to fling herself from a moving car. The family got her treatment for these issues, and Christine claims Natalia eventually confessed her true age to her therapist. Christine said the only reason she amended Natalia's birth certificate was so her daughter could get the proper adult psychiatric treatment she desperately needed and so she could qualify for assistance programs. When the family moved to Canada, Christine did everything she could to support Natalia, who had just emerged from secure psychiatric care at the time. The Barnett set her up in an apartment, paid her rent, and helped her apply for benefits. When Natalia was evicted for causing issues in her first home, they helped her find another place to live, but her daughter suddenly cut off all contact. 
When Christine visited her apartment, she found a child's pink dress and toy bike and became afraid Natalia had found a way to con her way into another family who could be in serious danger. Now, that's Christine's side of the story, a woman who claims to be devastated that she's been charged with abandoning her child. But officials aren't buying the idea that Natalia is an adult and they have some compelling and confusing evidence on their side. One reason this story is so complicated is because of Natalia's adoption. So many of her records are sealed and it's hard to know anything for sure at this point. And Michael Barnett made some statements to police immediately after his arrest that seemed to contradict pretty much everything his now ex-wife said. Michael told the police that Christine was the one who instructed Natalia to tell people that she is older than she actually is. He also confessed that when they took Natalia to the doctor, the hospital confirmed she was still a child at that time. This would mean Natalia was a minor when the family relocated to Canada and left her behind. And according to the police, the Barnetts did not provide any financial support for Natalia after they moved. Michael admitted that he was fully aware Natalia was a child when the rest of the family moved to Canada. The police also refute Christine's claims about the bone density tests performed on Natalia. They say the results show she was eight years old in 2010, and in 2012, subsequent tests revealed she was somewhere around 11 years old. So wait, even if Natalia is still a child, why were the Barnetts told she was six when she was adopted while the police claim a bone density test from the same year proves she was eight? Well, there could be a few reasons. The first and most obvious of which is that the test or the doctor's interpretation of the results weren't 100% accurate but were pretty close. Another possibility is that Natalia really was eight years old and her birth certificate was inaccurate, although not to the extent claimed by the Barnetts. According to other parents who have adopted children from the Ukraine, that does happen more often than you would think. One mother claims the orphanage her child came from would simply mark down children's ages based on their height. The police evidence combined with Michael's statements certainly make it seem like Christine was the mastermind behind amending Natalia's birth certificate and abandoning her. But Michael's lawyer claims his client confessed after a surprising hours-long police interrogation with no attorney present. Now his story has changed to more closely coincide with Christine's, and he's entered a plea of not guilty. Besides the Barnetts and the police, there are other people close to the story who have some opinions on the situation. Margaret Axum was Natalia's neighbor while she was living on her own, and says the two met while taking an adult education class at Lafayette Adult Resource Academy. She says Natalia is a talkative person even though she can be shy at first. She also doesn't believe Natalia is a child. Although she's not sure of her exact age, she believes her to be at least 18, but definitely not older than 30. And if Natalia was taking those classes, she would have had to pass a placement test proving she was at least on par with a high school junior. But who would know the truth about Natalia better than the woman who actually gave birth to her? The Daily Mail claims to have found Natalia's birth mother, a woman named Anna Volodymyrovina Gava. She says Natalia's original birth certificate was accurate and she was born in 2003. Anna says that because of Natalia's health problems, doctors told her the baby would have no quality of life and persuaded her to give her up for adoption. She's furious with the Barnetts for how they treated Natalia and she's mad at herself for being talked into giving up her child. According to Anna, she was told that letting her daughter be adopted would allow her to receive the expensive medical care she desperately needed. And then there is Cynthia Manns, Natalia's new mother. Yes, Natalia is in the custody of yet another family and is living with Cynthia and Antoine Manns and their children. They even tried to legally adopt her at one point, but the adoption was denied because of Natalia's amended birth certificate proving she's an adult. They also tried to amend her birth certificate yet again, but they later withdrew their petition and the case was dismissed. Natalia has been with this family since 2016 and Cynthia and Antoine say she's doing just fine. According to them, they absolutely consider her a daughter, and she's a sister to their other children. Of course, we all want to know how old Natalia really is. Is she a teenager who was abandoned, or is she a grown woman struggling with her mental health? But perhaps the craziest part of this story is that it might not matter. Well, at least as far as the Barnett's criminal trial is concerned. According to one prosecutor, the Indiana State Neglect Statute defines a dependent as a person of any age who has a mental or physical disability. That means even if Natalia was over 18 when the family moved away to Canada, 
Her physical and mental challenges would have made it a criminal act to leave her behind like that. If you're eager to find out what happens next, join the club! The jury trial is set for January 28, 2020, and there are serious repercussions if the Barnetts lose their case. They could be facing up to five years in prison and fines of $10,000. As a result of the charges, Christine has already lost her job and started a GoFundMe to cover her living and legal expenses. But despite this, she's keeping her head up and claims she looks forward to telling her story in court. Is Natalia the ultimate con artist, or is she a girl who has been through a lot of trauma at the hands of people who were supposed to support her? Tell us what you think in the comments section and then click on the subscribe button for more videos from The Taco. See you next time!